All right, for sake of confidentiality, everyone's names in the story has been changed. So it was me, Jimmy, Ron, and Jerma all in the back of Jimmy's car on our way to check out Jerma's new apartment. You know, we were already pretty skeptical of Jerma's new apartment, considering it's easy for us to forget that he was still in high school. It's just easy to forget that sometimes, because A, he just looks like a grown man, and B, he's just been completely assimilated by his cool elders. Seriously, when I'm out with Jerma, it looks like he's my chaperone on the grade 6 field trip. Not only that, but the apartment Jerma chose to move in just didn't make any sense logistically. Jerma's high school, the suburbs. Jerma's part-time job that pays his bills, yeah, that's also in the suburbs. But for some reason, he decided to sign a one-year lease on an apartment dead center downtown. So we figured he was going to transfer to a local school, or even just do school fully online, but nope. He was planning on making that treacherous, long commute every single morning. Okay, Jerma, this better be the most luxurious apartment I have ever seen. So we pull up to the apartment building, and it's about exactly what you'd expect that a high school student working minimum wage could afford. Jerma, if I lived here, I'd be walking around with a purse and some pepper spray, okay? Open the car door, and immediately, I'm stepping on broken glass and syringes of what I can only assume is heroin. So Jerma's showing us around his apartment. Holy crap, that boy survives on nothing but eggs. It was honestly a pretty nice apartment on the inside. I mean, his bed looked way more cozy than the saw room I sleep in at night. I go to check out the view from his bedroom window, and I just see this tumbleweed of so many intertangled webs. Like seriously, I have never seen spider webs this thick. <laughs> and inside of this cocoon straight from hell, I count at least six massive spiders. One of them was even feasting on a crane fly. Jerma, please, for the love of God, never open this window. Ever. Yeah, I don't know how well I'd sleep at night knowing there's only a thin layer of glass separating me from the seventh circle of hell. So after that, Jerma took us to the local corner store to pick up some more eggs. I felt like a tourist, except instead of taking photos with the well-turned Jesse statues in Albuquerque, I'm standing outside watching a half-naked homeless person stumble around the streets like a zombie. How many more months in your lease, Jerma? Once we got to the store, Jerma the egg connoisseur took one whiff of the eggs and went, These eggs aren't acceptable. Then we just left without buying anything. The store was crowded around by a bunch of scary looking dudes posted up. You know, walking around these streets at night didn't seem very safe. And then I thought how much worse it would be living here as a single woman. Call me Nicole and I wouldn't leave the apartment with no less than 10 escorts. No, no, not, not those escorts. Next we go to the shawarma shop and I'm stalked by a sketchy looking lady standing right outside. She asked if she can see my phone for a second and she needed to call somebody, but I was getting all sorts of red flags from her. First off, what are you doing out here at night without a cell phone? But more importantly second, there's a shawarma shop right inside with all sorts of people, all people who probably have cell phones, and all people you could probably ask to borrow their cell phone. The only difference being out here, if I give you my cell phone and you decide to run, there wouldn't be any witnesses and you could probably get away. But if you tried to pull that off in the shawarma shop, you'd be seen by at least 10 different people. So as much as I hate to leave a damsel in distress, I politely declined her proposal. Or hell, just give me the number, I'll call it, I'll hold the phone and put it on speaker, but no. I'm sorry, I'm not giving a sketchy looking stranger in a dark alley my phone at 12am. So Jimmy gets his shawarma and we head back to Jimmy's car to leave. When we get back, we see that the dumpster that Jimmy decided to park right next to was currently occupied by two homeless people digging around in it. They were at least half of their torso deep in this garbage. And let me tell you this, from first-hand experience, it is really awkward to say your goodbyes to your friend when not even an arm length away, there's two homeless guys currently having a bath in the dumpster. I don't think any of us had the social skills to know what we should have done in that situation, so we just kind of ignored them and got back into the car. As we were pulling out from the parking lot, we saw a third homeless guy standing near the exit. This guy had all his stuff laid out in a line, and he was kind of digging through it all. We were talking over some music in the car over our disapproval of Jerma's new apartment when I heard muffled screaming. Check the rear view mirror, and the two homeless guys in the dumpster were chasing after our car, hands raised, knives in each hand. Jimmy floored it. My head is pressed against the back of the seat. Jimmy is not taking any chances tonight. Once we pull out onto the main road, we're all looking behind us. Turns out the two homeless guys in the dumpster weren't chasing us, they were chasing the guy at the exit. The three of them run out into traffic, into the street. 
The two homeless guys from the dumpster are way faster than this third guy and they're gaining on him. I see the homeless guy closest to the runner lift his arms up as he's about to do a stab motion downwards. And I swear, this felt like it was happening in slow motion. In my thoughts, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm about to witness a murder. The angle this guy was about to come down on with this knife, he would have gashed through his entire backside. But right before the knife was about to connect with the guy's back, I saw probably the fastest reflexes I have ever seen. For real, this looked like the reflexes of an aimbot. Just as the knife was grazing the back of his shirt, he whips the bag he had in his hand around and smacks the guy in the face with it. That second of disorientation was all the guy needed to escape into the traffic. In the car, we were all freaking out. We just watched an IRL match of Dead by Daylight live. Bro managed to pull off the pallet stun in real life. Oh. First thing we do is call a German, let him know immediately what is literally happening just now right outside of his building. And German just laughs it off like, Haha, yeah, they do that. German, how can you say that so nonchalantly? How can you feel safe here? Germa is living in the Crystal Palace. And let me reiterate, Germa is a high school minority boy. All it takes is for him to walk by the wrong person on the wrong day. On the way home, I was thinking about the butterfly effect, you know? What had happened if we had taken that extra minute in the shawarma shop? We might have been caught up all in that. If the two dumpster dudes decided to chase the third guy right when we were getting back to the parking lot, they would have had to run through us. How would I have reacted if I had seen two homeless guys running towards us with knives out? It's scary stuff. So yeah, next time I visit Germa's apartment, it's gonna have to be during the day. And I'm gonna have to be wearing some riot gear. And you know, a little support helicopter on standby never hurt anybody. Germa, I know you're watching this. Maybe invest in a little bottle of pepper spray.